Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the latest instalment of Tarden Dane's Indie Read Along by reviewing two Bizarro novels. So we'll start with this one, which is Gay Zombie Sluts in Key West by Mandy DeSandra. I've previously read DeSandra's uh, Fox News Fuckfest, which I will link to below. I'm going to read you the blurb of this one here. By the way, this is going to be super not safe for work. Uh, you probably shouldn't watch this if you're at work or if you're under the age of... Like, 40, to be honest. <laughs> Literary novelist Colin Wynette is ready to let loose after manning the McSweeney's both at the... Oh yeah, there's a typo on the blurb. Literary novelist Colin Wynette is ready to let loose after manning the McSweeney's booth at the Miami Book Fair. Colin drives down to America's party in Paradise Spot, Key West, but something strange is washed upon the shore. Colin encounters a slew of colourful characters partying down south, including a hashtagging twink mooching off an old queen, a sexy CIA spy, and Joe Francis of Girls Gone Wild fame. The good times end quickly as they must find a way to stop the gay zombie sluts of Key West. There's actually two typos on the blurb. Um, but actually, for what this is, it's not bad. I mean, again, it, it with anything bizarro, you know, it's like the whole suspending your disbelief thing. I guess. Uh, anyway, there's an author's note here. This is prophecy. If humanity doesn't change its ways, the zombies will come and they won't be gay. Dun dun dun. So I guess with uh, Fox News Fuckfest, even though I don't watch Fox News, Fox News and I'm not American or anything like that, I did know who quite, a, who quite a few of the characters were. In this one, I don't even know if they're real people or not. So... I don't know, maybe someone will let me know in the co comments. So this is here, this here we have some of the setup because Colin goes on to become like the, ma the main guy and this is in his youth. His babysitter from North Texas University was obsessed with zombie films and would watch them with Colin. She was a women's studies major and was writing a thesis about how zombies represented the patriarchy and the apathy and defeatism of third wave feminism. Colin sat in his Superman pyjamas watching these cruel creatures eat brains and make people cry. Little Colin wanted to believe there was a happy zombie land, a place where the zombies were vegetarians and best friends with zombies and non-zombies alike, where the zombies gave each other kisses and hugs and played with puppies. Colin told this idea to his babysitter, but she responded with, Wake up, Colin. Zombies are the patriarchy. They need to be destroyed. But as we see, you know, they're gay zombies. They're very happy. They're fabulous. So I like this little exchange. He goes on to meet, a, 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 I believe it's a zombie prostitute. Uh, Colin got out of his car and said, uh, Miss um, Stripper, looks like you have been drugged. It breaks my heart that rape culture is very prevalent in your job. I will try to tackle this in a future book. Brains, beard man. Yummy brains, the stripper replied. Yes, I understand, Colin said. They treated you like meat, but you want to be respected and desired for your mind. It's a very woke book. It revels in its wokeness, I think. In fact, I think you need to appreciate that with any kind of bizarro, you know? that it's poking fun at the, at the world we live in. We have this little bit, so we've got, what was it? The hashtagging twink with his uh, old gay queen. Uh, he goes, hashtag hell on earth is old dick and no Netflix. We are now out of coke and out of food. We sucked each other's dicks just for nourishment. I am already tired of it. He has gray pubes too, it's gross. Hashtag silver snakes on a plane. This one final bit I like here is uh, this reference here. No, this isn't real. I'm hallucinating. I must have gotten drugged at the Miami Book Fest by that weird guy, Christoph Paul, who wore the Jason mask. And Christoph is, is Mandy DeSandra, effectively. But also, he has a YouTube channel here on... He actually hasn't uploaded for a while, but he used to do, like, reviews and various skits and stuff where he wore this Jason mask as well. So all in all, I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5. It was pretty good. It wasn't as good as Fox News Fuckfest, though, so I would recommend that. Uh, and then the other one I have here is Ask Goblins of Auschwitz by Cameron Pierce. And this was sent to me by Time for Books. So I think she, like, she ordered something else and they accidentally sent her this. And then she thought, I know who might like this. So the blurb here. It's Monty Python meets Nazi exploitation in a surreal nightmare as can only be imagined by bizarro author Cameron Pierce. In a land where black snow falls in the shape of swastikas, there exists a nightmarish prison camp known as Auschwitz. It is run by a fascist flatulent race of aliens called the Ass Goblins, who travel in apple-shaped spaceships to abduct children from the neighbouring world of Kidland. Prisoners 999 and 1001 are conjoined twin brothers forced to endure the sadistic tortures of these ass-shaped monsters. To survive, they must eat kid skin and work all day constructing bicycles and sex dolls out of dead children. While the Ass Goblins become drunk on cider made from fermented child flesh, the twins plot their escape. But it won't be easy. They must overcome toilet toads, cock rats, astoles, and the surgical experiments that are slowly mutating them into goblin child hybrids. Now what's interesting about this is that despite the fact that it's bizarro, 
it does it is actually kind of moving like i mean in the same way that when you read books set during the holocaust they're quite moving you know and there are bits in this where actually it kind of breaks from the satire and does become genuinely touching which i thought was quite interesting so i'm going to read some of my highlights so one of them here for example which again i think is quite a touching thing even in this sort of surreal world it inhabits the sun is up and scaly cockrats scurry from their hiding places to scavenge for polar snakes. I wish we could eat them, but the ass goblins feed the cockrats and other animals so much radiation that consuming animals is suicide. An easy suicide, I remember. So this bit is one of the surreal bits here. I'm not even going to try and explain it, I'm just going to read it. This is one of the things that happens to them. Uh, so they're all lined up for inspection and they have to bend down with their, with their asses in the air. Slap! A tongue slips inside my rectum. Far longer than a goblin finger, the tongue wriggles all the way inside me and swims around my belly. Fed only the skin of children, there's nothing inside me for the toilet toad to grab, so it wedges another vital organ from its place. The pain differs from night to night, depending on what the tongue decides to pull from my body. Tonight is the worst kind of pain, my insides flaring up like I'm full of a thousand long knives, which is a, a reference to the night of the long knives there, I assume. I scream, tears clean some ash from my cheeks. The ass goblins do not care how much we cry during dinner, so long as we plant ourselves to the tree stumps and let the toilet toads do their work. My ash cheeks swell out as the tongue stretches my rectum wide enough for a large organ to plop out. Blood and feces gussing out, I focus on bracing myself to the stump. This is the point where some kids fall into the toilet, never to be seen again. Then it's over, at least the first part. The toilet toad squeezes around my rear and hops into my lap. Toilet toads always melt a bit, as if they're made of chocolate. They're shit though, pure shit. The toad wags its tongue, presenting me the pulsing red blob that it stole from my body. You never know what you'll be eating for dinner until this point. Tonight it's my heart. Eat, 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 the ass goblins chant, relishing the festival of child misery. I glance over at Otto. Apparently he'll be eating a kidney. It's alright, I tell him. I ate one last night. They taste better than the rest. He glares at me, his eyes grey and his face in shadow. He unwraps the toad tongue and raises his kidney to his thin lips, takes a bite. And it, this is something that they do every night, so I'm not sure how they survive without those organs, but... I think what's interesting as well, so these main characters, 999 and 1001, are conjoined twins. But actually, 1001 has kind of bought into a little bit of the propaganda, and is saying, you know, oh, we should just do what they want, they'll leave us alone, they'll let us go and stuff. And actually, that's kind of reflected by what happens to them. They go through an operation to separate them, and then this happens. Otto, my brother, is no longer Otto. He cannot be Otto. Eight hairy arachnid legs hold his torso ten feet off the ground. His arms and legs are gone. Except for the spider limbs and goblin ass, bandages mask his entire body. Enough frontal, the white angel says. Show us that ass. The sentries march around the spider goblin like they're in a cakewalk. They spin Otto's rear towards me. An apple-sized eye blinks out at me from his rectum. I've always thought spiders were nature's freaks. They have too many eyes. With eight legs, a single peeper should suit your brother just fine. He's an ideal prototype for, for arachnids of the future. He's spidery and goblin-y, but childlike. So as you can see, a lot of weird stuff happens in this. I really like this sentence. I think this is oddly poetic. I suppose childhood was never anything more than a dream piss that dampened the sheets and dried, but it lingers on as an ammoniac disgust tainting everything. It's the only thing worth saving. We have this little thing here as well, and it's kind of a re repeated mantra. Ahead of the girl and boy above the main gate of Auschwitz, a neon sign beats back the darkness. It tells us that toys bring freedom, you know, in a R bite Max Fry, which means work brings freedom, uh, which is which was what was on uh, the actual gates of Auschwitz. So it's weird because it's bizarro fiction, and it's just very odd. But also it does make you think, and actually I think like, I don't know, I'm of the belief that no subject matter is outside the realms of jokes and parodies and that sort of thing. And I think this does it in a really quite a tasteful way for a bizarro novel. Like, it could have gone badly wrong and it didn't. And also the writing actually was pretty solid as well. So overall I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I thought of these two bizarro novels. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read either of these books, which seems kind of unlikely, but let me know anyway. And <laughs> let me know what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.